But ask anyone from South Australia or Queensland and they'll probably tell you the past year has been a warm one. Yeah, watching those temperatures during the course of the year has been astonishing. The Weather Bureau has tallied up all the temperature records and found that last year was the hottest year on record in Australia. Assistant Director of the Bureau of Meteorology, Neil Plummer, joins us. It was a hot one and you never can tell. You sort of think, was it really hot, wasn't it? Uh, it now becomes the hottest mm year on record? Yeah, of course conditions vary around the, the, the country and uh, but, but this uh, two, 2013 was notable for just being how hot it was over, over a large area of the country so as you mentioned 2013 the hottest year on record, our records go back to uh, 1910, um, it beat the previous record by a long way uh, so the, uh, the difference from the average was 1.2 degrees in 2013 um, the previous, um, the previous highest was 2005, where it was 1.03 1.03 above average. So, in climate terms, that's a that's a significant shift. What's the breakdown of statistics across the country? You say that it's, um, it's varies from from state to it state. It does, it, it does vary. Uh, but notable about the the climate was just how widespread the warmth was, and that's unusual. Uh, but in terms of the hottest on record, Western Australia was the hottest. Northern Territory, South South Australia. Queensland, New South Wales were the second warmest on record, Victoria the third warmest and uh, Tasmania came in fourth. Uh, so all states in the top four warmest years. Yeah, Tassie hitting some amazing temperatures. I seem to notice WA very hot this year. Was there anything particularly driving that? Um, it was just wide, widespread heat throughout the, throughout the year. So we got off to a very warm start um, in, in summer. Um, the monsoon didn't really uh, kick in, so that cooling you'd expect from the monsoon didn't, didn't really happen. A warm start, the warmest summer on, on record. Um, we got into uh, winter, the third warmest winter, uh, the hottest spring on, on record. And spring was incredible, really. So we had, we had temperatures in September that we'd normally see in November over many parts of, um, many parts of the, the, the country. And then, of course, we get into December and it's uh, very warm again. You talked about 2005 being the previous uh, record. What happened in between? Statistically? Statistically, uh, we've seen a warming trend. Um, so as I said, uh, all Australian records go back to 1910. Uh, the trend over that period is a little short of a degree warming over that period, where most of the warming has occurred since, since around about 1950. And that's consistent with the global pattern. Um, so it's not just us at the Bureau doing uh, the number crunching. It's, uh, it's all those countries around the world. Um, and it's, it's that body of evidence that we are seeing uh, a warming over Australia and a warming world. Does it get frustrating to you then when you have the, the discussion continues around whether it really is happening or not? Um, I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say frustrating because I think the statistics speak for themselves. Um, and again, it's that, it's that consistent body of evidence. Um, it's not just what we're seeing over Australia. It's what others are seeing right across the globe. And it's not just over the land. I've just talked about the Australian landmass. Uh, the waters around Australia have been warming. Um, in fact, the waters to the south of Australia were the warmest on record, uh, too. Uh, so it's that consistent body of evidence, uh, particularly since the 1950s, uh, where we've seen quite a strong warming. We've just seen um, Cyclone Christine has come uh, through WA, and actually there's a bit of a silver lining, uh, pardon the pun there, because uh, some much-needed rain uh, was, was gained by the, the crop farmers through that region. But uh, in 2013, did you see more extreme weather events, as we tend to call them? We did see. The most notable extremes were those heat waves. Mm. Uh, so we had the longest, um, you know, the longest period of heat waves extending over the largest area back in, in January. Um, they seem to have come back later, uh, later in the year. Um, so it's the heat waves that are the most notable yeah. um, e extremes. Rainfall overall over Australia wasn't that far from the average, just slightly below the, the average, 428 millimetres as compared to 465 on, on, on average. Uh, so it was really the extreme heat that was more. And you can't, I know whenever you ask somebody from the Weather Bureau what's going to happen in the future, you always say you can't tell us, but there are trends surely that you can, uh, you can see. There are cer certainly trends. Uh, so, so over Australia, I mentioned this warming, warming trend. Um, if you look at our, our, the, the past decade, there's only been one year in the past decade which has actually been below average, that was 2011. All, all the other nine were above, above average. 
So on balance, um, given, um, given, given the trend, given what we'd expect um, from um, an enhanced greenhouse effect, what we'd expect, we'd expect warming um, to, to continue. So the odds are for a warmer 20, 2014, but as you said, we can't say that definitively. Well, you do see cycles like uh, uh, El Nino and La Nina, am I getting those right? That's, ex that's exactly <laughs> right. And because we did go through that drought period um, through the, the middle of the noughties as well. That's we? right. Yeah. yeah. We'll always, we'll always have that, um, that strong influence year to year from El Nino and, and La Nina. That'll always be there. And uh, particularly with rainfall, uh, the drought's more associated with El Nino um, and the wet period's more associated with La Nina. Uh, they'll always be there. But that warming trend is, um, you know, it's been fairly clear yeah. over several decades. Okay.